Ni howdy, y'all. This is Eric with Tea House Ghost, and I am back at my tea table for a little bit of a different kind of episode today, which is to say I am approaching my tea table at 11.30 at night. Um, so that's one main difference. Um, the other main difference is that I am drinking a tea that I started this morning. Um, so this gives me an opportunity to open up two pretty common questions or concepts that I am met with in the world of Gong Fu Cha from people I'm drinking tea with. Um, one of those being how long can you let a tea that you may not have finished sit in a gaiwan and be able to still continue it later? Um, so that's one one big question, and I'll get to that in a moment. The short version is it's different for each type of tea. Um, and the other question is about caffeine and about is this tea going to keep me up or not? That is probably one of, if not the most common question that I get asked um, in tea circles is, you know, what's the caffeine like? And what people really are asking is, is this going to, is this beverage going to give me trouble sleeping most of the time, I think. Um, and so I'd like to tackle those today. Before I get into those questions, a little bit about this tea. I'm drinking Cloudburst Choupoir. This is a, uh, a Choupoir from Donawo Mountain from Li Shu Lin, the consummate tea farmer and tea master. Um, and the difference between this and Rain Butter, which is another kind of flagship 2009 Shu Puar from West China Tea from that year, from 2009, from Li Shu Lin, is that this one has been pressed into a cake, or was, you know, then in 2009, and has aged further its next 11 years as a cake instead of loose. And so that makes it a little bit different, um, because the, the nature of being stored in a cake makes it so that the tea ages in different ways over time in that the tea on the outside of the cake is exposed to oxygen um, and will the microorganisms in the tea that are fermenting it or over time or like breaking it down are going to react to oxygen on the outside leaves and then on the inside leaves there's less or no air in there because it's very very tightly pressed and so they change it a little bit in a little bit of a different way over time and so the effect overall is to give just a different kind of breakdown process um, than tea that is stored loose and so uh, Sohan and West China Tea call their cake pressed 2009 Shu Puar Cloudburst, and that's what I'm drinking. I started that this morning when I got up probably around 10 a.m., somewhere around there. It's now 11.30 p.m., and I'm drinking this tea. So right off the bat, I will say that Shu Puar, and Sheng Puar for that matter, but definitely Shu Puar, both types of Puar um, can last quite a while. If you don't finish them and... Uh, they, you want to keep steeping them later. Um, both types of puar have a, a, a kind of long in Gaiwan shelf life, as it were. I would say probably up to 24 hours you can, you can let shu puar or sheng puar sit for up to 24 hours after maybe two or three steepings, five or six steepings, you know, whatever. I think I probably got through about five or six this morning and uh, then left it at my tea table all day. I took a nap today in the, in the evening time because I was exhausted. And now I'm back up. I do still want to sleep tonight, though. So, you know, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, before I move on, I'll just kind of briefly go over some of the the kind of in Gaiwan shelf lives of some other teas just so that uh, y'all have an idea of, of how I think about these things so alongside 
poor RT, I would put HA in that kind of tw up to 24 hour category. Um, similarly, I would put aged white tea in this category. I would say all of those teas are pretty stable and, and, and won't get funky or, or just kind of like lose flavor or not really be as good if you come back to them later. They're all going to still be pretty juicy um, and pretty good coming back to them even if they've had a chance to sit. Um, usually I consider Yabao in the Sheng Puar category, even though it's kind of a little bit of an outlier as a, as a tea. And so I'll stick that in there too. Uh, Yabao is one you can leave sitting for quite a while, come back to it 20 hours later and keep making it. And it's great. Um, moving away from these teas, I would say red tea and uh, some oolongs, particularly the darker roasted oolongs. Um, so some Wuyis um, and some Phoenixes um, and a charcoal roasted Tiaguan Yin. I would put them kind of in the 12 hour range. If you can get them with it, get back to them within 12 hours, they're usually pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say the same for lower oxidation oolongs. Some of those those green anchies and or jade anchies and and Taiwanese oolongs, um, or like your lower oxidation phoenixes. Those tend to not be quite as good when you come back to them. The flavor is a little different. Maybe they lost some of their fragrance, which is really a big driving factor of some of these teas is their fragrance they kind of it's just kind of wisped away while you left it there and so i would put those lower oxidation oolongs um as well as green tea and fresh white tea mm, hold on as well as green tea in uh the lower oxidation oolongs and green tea i would say three maybe six hours it can sit Fresh white tea, I would probably put alongside the red tea and the higher roast oolongs up in the 12-hour category. It's a little more resilient. Um, and, and, and maintaining of its flavor um, and fragrances. What am I missing? Yellow tea, probably in the same as... Depending on its, you know, yellow teas have a little bit of a range there, but I would probably be somewhere in that six hour range for yellow tea. And then let's see. Have I missed any types of tea? I think I covered them all. Aged white tea, fresh white tea, green tea, red tea, all four oolongs, hei cha, shu puar, shung puar. Purple tea doesn't really get its own category because you can kind of do it in all kinds of different ways. You know, there's purple shung, there's purple shoe, there's purple red. It doesn't really get its own thing. So yeah, if I missed any, let me know and I'll, I'll make sure I get, get y'all that info. But um, that's kind of my general take on shelf life, um, in Gaiwan shelf life for coming back to a tea later. So now on to our other thought for tonight which is caffeine content and the energy of tea and whether or not a tea is gonna keep you up so this is something that i constantly have to provide like a disclaimer for i feel whenever because most often this question is framed to me as does this tea have caffeine right off the bat i have to be like all tea has caffeine. Camellia sinensis, the plant, has caffeine in it. All of them have caffeine in it, except for Yabao, which some studies suggest doesn't have caffeine in it. It's Camellia crassa columna. It's a different thing. That being said, it has several other microchemicals that also give you energy. L-theanine, theobromine, these things. So... Really, the conver I try to I often try to shift the conversation around energy of tea toward its chi. Any given tea 
has its own chi, and this is going to manifest itself in, in people differently. So really, the way I like to think about it is that tea, different teas are like people, and you have a relationship with them. And your relationship with a certain tea might be different than my relationship with a certain tea. So really, the question of whether this tea is going to keep you up at night is for you to discover by making this tea. Um, so maybe if you're worried about it, make it for the first few times during the day and and see how it makes you feel and try to put yourself in that position of like, well, if I were trying to go to bed today or bed right now, could I do it? What's the energy like that is um, that I'm feeling in my body and, and is this compatible with settling into sleep some of these things can be kind of counterintuitive for example a prime example is that i often do recommend ya bao to people who say they have a sensitivity to caffeine because it doesn't have caffeine in it but ya bao keeps me up me it keeps me up it may not keep you up but it, it does keep me up you know, it's, it, it, the specific energy of raw yabao is one that does get me feeling um, a certain type of energy <clears throat> that's not really compatible with my sleep cycles. I wouldn't say it's super directional, though that one, that is one that I often, I often a word I often use for certain teas that I would say keep me up directional meaning it makes me want to go do something else it's not very centering or grounding it's directional um that's kind of a general catch-all term it's not very descriptive but it means essentially in my usage not grounding and not centering it it, it, it is like a change it up energy um some examples of directional teas um, Sumao Fung green tea, I consider a, a directional tea to me. That's how it, how it agrees with my body is in it, or how it alchemizes with my body is in a directional fashion. I would say the same of a lot of my favorite Phoenix oolongs, Thunderstruck, Magnolia fragrance, Yellow Twig, all directional, highly directional, really make me want to get up and do something, give me a kind of um, galvanized energy. Red teas keep me up, but they're not directional. Red tea is just, you know, that kind of, especially the, 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 the Gushu Hong Cha, um, the ancient tree red tea from Yunnan. Um, that one will, will, will keep me up. Um, but these are just things that I've kind of learned from, making them and seeing how they fit to give you some examples of teas that won't keep me up cloudburst is definitely one of them shu puar um shu puar especially older shu puar but most shu puar i can drink even late at night and it doesn't keep me up there's one exception to that within the usual spat of shu puar that i'm drinking from all from west china tea and that would be the Dragon Bing. The Dragon Bing from 2012 was one that I found had a kind of restless energy when I drink it. And that would be kind of the exception to the rule there. It, it definitely kept me up. If I tried to go to bed after drinking some Dragon Bing, it was, uh, it was bad news. But Dragon Bro, different story, much more mellow tea easy to get to sleep. Similarly, aged white teas, I would say, are ones uh, like a, an aged shomei, three to seven years old, uh, but, uh, more than three years old of a shomei or a baimudan. Those teas usually are very gentle for me. I'll stress again that this is all for me, you know, and, and these, uh, my, my, my coming to understand my relationship with all these teas, there's, there's really only one good way to do it. And that's to brew the teas 
and see how they make you feel. So I can make all these suggestions to y'all, and hopefully there there's some amount of universality to it such that you know my suggestions don't <laughs> put you in a in a rut. But the the truth of the matter is is I I actually prefer the landscape to be not so universal. The the some, part of what's interesting about tea and uh, and people is that it is a reminder that people are different and teas are different and relationships are about timing and um, they can change. So that brings up another point, you know, like um, I'll say this, my twin used to drink tea with me every day. Recently, a lot of teas, especially Shangpuar, haven't been agreeing with them. It's making them feel some sort of way that they typically don't like. Um, and so this this goes to show that a relationship with a tea can go in eras or phases over the course of a lifetime. You know, we drank tea together every day for probably seven or eight years. And, and, and then Crow, my twin, started experiencing a little bit of a different relationship with certain teas such that they didn't really want to drink them all the time. And that's totally okay. I think that's normal. I think it's it's good to listen to yourself and to know this about yourself and about your relationship with tea. So yeah, um, I, I really encourage you most to get to know your teas. If you want to know whether this tea is going to keep you up or not, ask it by making it. See how it makes you feel. I think that's probably good enough for today. I don't really have a whole lot else that I need to talk about. I kind of wanted to just kind of use this as a, use this episode and this, this instance of me actually drinking tea late at night as a, as a jumping off point for some of these concepts that come up a lot. Uh, I guess there's not really much to say about the uh, nuts and bolts of how I'm pouring this tea. I could, I mean, I'm using boiling hot water. I'm pouring directly on the leaves, really just trying to squeeze out all the juice out of it. I'm steeping it pretty long because I started this evening session with maybe the sixth or seventh steeping. And so I'm still trying to get a lot of that rich, dark brew out of this tea. So my steepings are probably up in the 40 seconds to a minute long. Yeah, anything else I need? I don't think that's, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. I think that's going to be it. It's going to be a little bit of a short episode tonight. But thanks for listening, y'all. Um, it's great to great to have tea with y'all late at night. Um, it's raining here in Austin, which is very beautiful sounding. I don't I, I don't think y'all can probably hear it on mic, but it's raining here and I love it. So I'm gonna go enjoy my night now, and I'll uh, catch y'all next time. Until then, take care of each other, y'all. Mm-hmm.